Hello and welcome to From No Crypto to No Crypto. This is Blockchain Wayne bringing you another cryptocurrency podcast. Today's episode is brought to us by Coinsierge Club, mobile private key wallet and point of sale solution. Coinsierge Club makes purchasing easy, safe, and the overall process more efficient while costing less. All right, let's take a look at what's going on with the market update. It looks like the bears are still in control. All right, current market cap for total cryptocurrency is sitting at $209 billion right now, down slightly just a little bit from yesterday. Bitcoin following that trend down a little bit less than 1% over the last 24-hour period, uh, but still sitting right over $6,400 mark. Bitcoin dominance has slipped a little bit to 52.98%. We did see another run up today with Ripple. Ripple went on a tear and then correcting a little bit, up about 6% over the last 24 hours. We're going to talk about that when we get into the crypto news, what might have impacted that and caused that to go up. But for the most part, the last 24 hours, most cryptocurrencies are down anywhere from slightly a percent or so down to, you know, about three, four, five percent, depending on which ones they are. So still no clear direction on what's going on with the market. Still not looking good right as of this moment. All right, let's jump into the crypto news. But first, let's look at the I mentioned this in a past episode, the reverse CNBC indicator strikes again. So we're hoping this is going to be the case. As we've mentioned in the past, this is an ongoing joke among crypto traders that anytime CNBC puts out a position, usually if you trade against the opposite, you will win. Hopefully that is the case right now. Earlier today, CNBC tweeted, Bitcoin tumbling today and hashtag, and at Scott's Nation sees more pain coming to the crypto. So basically CNBC is saying they see more downside to Bitcoin. Uh, one of the traders I follow is very experienced trader. Uh, retweeted that post saying, thanks for the info, CNBC, time to go long on Bitcoin. So hopefully that is still the case. Hopefully that's what's going to happen, but we'll see what happens with that. Just interesting to see how that plays out as many people are taking that uh, joke into consideration now. Anytime CNBC makes a prediction of the market, if you trade the opposite, you typically will win. So let's see what happens with that one. I'm sure we'll follow up with that one over the next couple of days. All right, next up. Interesting topic in the news today. The U.S. government agencies have spent collectively $5.7 million hiring contractors who perform blockchain analysts, analysis, I'm sorry, which involves linking an individual's identity with their cryptocurrency funds. Though there are tools and even individual cryptocurrencies that purport to allow users to send funds anonymously, the vast majority of cryptocurrency users leave enough of a trail that equipped with the right tools, investigators can determine whom a particular wallet belonged. So unsurprisingly, the top spender among the U.S. government agencies, can anyone guess? The IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, is responsible for collecting federal income tax. The IRS assigned nine contracts with cryptocurrency forensic providers together worth just under $2.2 million and representing 38% of the government's total spending on these services. So why did I bring this up? Why did I share this? I typically focus on what's going to help us go mainstream. This is another reason why I think privacy coins are going to be a big run in the near future, but also just to show you where the U.S. stands. And the U.S. in the past has been leading when it comes to technology. And it, I hate to say it, but at this point, they are very lagging when it comes to it. Now, they're not taking a stance like China and India where they're banning the cryptocurrency, but they're focusing more on how to regulate and how to collect taxes on it than they are. How can they make this industry flourish? How can they help embrace it? How can they put regulations that will not hinder the technology, but allow it to flourish. And instead they're spending way too much of our taxpayer resources on just trying to figure it out, trying to figure out how to collect taxes on it, how to figure out who owns what, not the approach to take. And we're going to see that may affect us. When you look at countries such as Singapore, Dubai, Switzerland, Malta, Iceland, a lot of those countries are, are being pro cryptocurrency really embracing the industry. And you're seeing companies move their whole offices to these countries just because of the pro crypto stance. And you're going to see those areas flourish as this market grows. So uh, just my two cents on that one. Uh, next up, Google's back in the news. Google has unbanned crypto related ads. So what they're doing, they're allowing regulated companies to utilize this platform to advertise their products. In March, uh, Google executive Scott Spencer stated cryptocurrency investments have potential to cause harm in financial markets, leading a search giant to ban crypto ads, which was 
a bad news. It caused the market to crash. I'm looking for my correction today, considering when they announced that in the past, many people saw that as a negative sign. The market tanked that day when they made that announcement. I'm looking for my gains back. Hopefully that'll be soon. This article is fairly new, so maybe once it circulates, we can see some bullish movement. Uh, he stated, uh, in the past, we don't have a crystal ball to know where the future is going to go with cryptocurrency, but we've seen enough consumer harm or potential for consumer harm. That's an area they want to approach with extreme caution. So that was back in March. So the reverse ban of crypto-related ads by Google has demonstrated the willingness of the conglomerate to work with legitimate projects and companies in the cryptocurrency sector. So that is where those blanket bans are not good. You've seen Facebook reverse its stance, and now they're starting to take applications to work with legitimate companies, and Google looks to be doing the same. All right, next up. So Circle has announced the addition of four new digital assets to the Circle Invest platform. That brings the total number of cryptocurrencies on that platform up to 11, and it was announced in a blog post. Circle revealed the new addition to be EOS, Stellar, 0x, and Quantum. So Circle further revealed that the four assets can be purchased through the Circle Invest platform, either individually or as a part of a basket using the Buy the Market Retail Portfolio Investment feature. So uh, some more things to help bring some volume to that. That will help to bring uh, more, more money into the game. I do like a few of those projects there, so we'll see what happens. Every one of those is listed. And when I talk about cryptos that have a working product, and I cover those. Every single one of those is listed in there as working product. All right, so next up, let's talk about why Ripple was on a breakout today. So it was bolstered by a hopeful announcement from cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase. Coinbase announced that they were going to change up their, basically the way that they list, they go about listing digital assets. And many people feel that those, those changes are made to accommodate for them to make room for Ripple on their trading platform. I mean, obviously you would think Coinbase would be looking at that. Ripple slight for Ripple is at number three in total market cap of all cryptocurrencies. Last week we saw it for a brief period of time breaking into number two. Now how much is Coinbase missing out on by not having one of say the top three cryptocurrencies in their offering? So Ripple's traded deeply in red for most of the day. When it happened, we saw a bullish change. We saw Ripple jump up. Uh, it was, you know, it hit a low of 43, like 43 and a half cents. And now it's trading right at 49, let's say 49.7 cents, which is up great. So uh, Coinbase announcement, it was overhauling its cryptocurrency listing process, replacing what had largely been a cautious approach to one that more closely mirrors the process through which other exchanges approve coins for listing. So looks like Coinbase is opening up. So We'll see what happened. Will that be Ripple? Who knows? I mentioned in the past, I think 0x is going to be one of the first ones that Coinbase adds. It's not in the top three, but 0x is also a platform and blockchain that they're utilizing the technology for their Coinbase Pro platform. So we could see that come about very shortly as they already have a working relationship with that entity. All right, so let's jump into crypto education today. And today I want to revisit two cryptos that I mentioned in the past that have working products. Now I've talked about this quite often, but I really feel that 2019, which obviously is right around the corner, is going to be the year where we see, you know, another crypto breakout we've been seeing in this bear market, a lot of infrastructure being put in, which is very encouraging. And what you're going to see in 2017, early 2018, when we saw those runs, so with massive gains, it didn't really matter what the technology was that the crypto was pushing or if they even had a working product. It was all hype. It was all speculation. A lot of people were just throwing money at any low market cap cryptocurrency, expecting gains. And that drove the whole market up. But what's going to happen in 2019 is you're going to see a lot of these ones that don't have legitimate working products. You're going to see a lot of those fail. And I think you're going to see a lot of ones with working products start a lot of the hype start to get replaced with okay what has the biggest potential based on their working products or what are they working on two i want to talk about today and revisit uh, i know i've mentioned one of them in the past so i want to talk about two uh, one of them being steam so steam is the cryptocurrency that powers steam it steam it is a decentralized social media platform that incentivizes user participation through micro payments so consider it like reddit except instead of just upvoting or downvoting users can actually reward creators for their efforts now, I've used Steemit in the past, kind of forgot about it, hadn't gone back to it. I made quite a few posts in December and January, 
and kind of moved away from it. As you can imagine, that was around the time things uh, started the downtrend and I probably should have stuck with it. Logged back in it yesterday just to see what was going on and actually had a few dollars in there of, of steam it dollars and stuff that's available that, that was given from articles that I've posted. So steam, it, it's a cryptocurrency used exclusively on the steam it platform. It gives it a limited use, but seeing how Steemit is live and boasts a few hundred thousand users, which is growing every day, it's hard to argue that it isn't a working product. So some people even earning money using Steemit. I've seen some posts earn upwards of three to four to five hundred dollars for a single post. Now there also are being some apps that are being built on the Steemit blockchain. One of them I came across yesterday, which was very interesting. A friend of mine just started using to upload some of his old music that he created. It's dsound.audio. It's a decentralized app built on the Steemit platform, and it's made for musicians to basically earn Steemit dollars for their music. So you can post music, you can go there, you can view it. I also found an outlet to post my podcast. So my podcast, I'm going to start uploading there. And curious to see how that goes as far as what we earn from there. Actually picked up a few Steemit dollars just from sharing this podcast on the Steemit uh, platform itself. But to see how D-Sound Audio works, it could be a way for musicians to any musician to earn money for their art, for sharing their music and collaborate on a decentralized platform. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Many of the problems with many of the decentralized apps that are out there right now, most of them are on the Ethereum blockchain is there's not enough users, even crypto kitties, which I mentioned in the past as a joke is, is one of the largest uh, decentralized apps that Ethereum has started with that on the Ethereum blockchain it only has about 500 active users or less that, you know, going on right now. All right. So next up, so basic attention token. So the reason I'm bringing this one back up, that's another token is it's working product is the brave browser. Now the brave browser in the, in the recent past has had more than 3 million active users. I feel it's a lot more than that because just this past week, the brave browser was in, in the news as many people were turning to the brave browser, both on mobile, and on, on desktop platforms because it is, you know, the Brave browser, it's built on in the blockchain space, but it's a functional browser, has built-in ad blocking and tracker blocking, and it makes the browsing experience faster and cleaner, a lot better than what you get with Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. Now, it's easy to say Google Chrome is one of the most used uh, web browsers out there, but with a lot of their privacy issues lately, many people are switching to the Brave browser. I started playing around with it a little over a week ago. It is a really good browser, a lot cleaner. I've got it on my phone. I use it on my phone all the time. I haven't really started dabbling around with it on my, uh, on my computer, but a lot of problems I've been having lately with some Google Chrome plugins. I may look to test that out and give a report back on how that happens. But the basic attention token, is you know their working product is the brave browser uh, people that post content can earn uh, basic attention tokens or they can convert that instantly to fiat dollars depending on how they want to get paid for their content so two different ways if you're creating content out there and you're not using steam it or the basic attention token in the brave browser i would suggest you get in there learn more about it start earning remember you can start earning a few pennies a day and that can really grow over time especially when we experience another bull run and many of the cryptos start getting more attention based on their product and not just hype. And you're going to see the masses flock to some of these platforms as they also solve a lot of problems as opposed to the centralized competitors that they are fighting. All right. So that is it for our crypto education corner today. Uh, all the news articles that we talk about can be found on our Facebook page from no crypto to no crypto. So make sure if you're not already following it, give that page a like, also, after you give it a like, hit the follow button and you will have the option to hit uh, see first. That's going to make sure that you, you never miss one of our updates. We update throughout the day with, you know, news articles that are relevant to what's going on in the crypto space, these podcast episodes and many other uh, informational topics that will help you as you learn and grow in the cryptocurrency space. And that is it for our episode today. Thank you for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.